In real or complex analysis, the concept of convergence is of fundamental importance. Many of the important concepts like continuity, differentiability, Riemann integrability are defined in terms of limit. The need for generalizing the concept of convergence was felt for a long time in particular for topological spaces. Actually, uh, we know that if we take any function between two metric spaces, then function is continuous if and only if function is sequentially continuous. But the same uh, does not hold for topological spaces. That is, if uh, we have any function between two topological spaces, then if function is continuous, then function is also sequentially continuous, but the converse need not be true. And uh, in particular case, if we take a function on a first countable space, then we have proved that function it is continuous if and only if function is sequentially continuous. So, there was a need for generalizing the concept of convergence and in 1922, E.H. Moore and H.L. Smith developed a generalized version of sequences to produce the notion of nets. In fact, the theory of nets provides an alternative method for introducing the concept of convergence in topological spaces. Today, we will discuss nets and their convergence in topological spaces. To define a net, it is required to define a directed set. Let A be a non-empty set, a binary relation. Here we are denoting it by greater than or equal to on A. is said to direct the set A if and only if three conditions are satisfied. First condition is for each A in A, A is greater than or equal to A. That is, this relation is reflexive. Second condition is for A, B, C in A, A greater than or equal to B, B greater than or equal to C implies A is greater than or equal to C. That is, this relation is transitive in A. And third condition is for A, B in A, there exists C in A such that C is greater than or equal to A and C is greater than or equal to B. That is, for any two elements in A, there exists an upper bound. If binary relation greater than or equal to directs A, then the ordered set A together with the relation is called a directed set. For example, the sets N, that is the set of natural numbers, Z, the set of integers, Q, the set of rational numbers, and R, the set of real numbers are directed by the relation in the usual sense. That means these are directed set with usual order. Now we will consider an example. Let XT be a topological space and X belongs to capital X. Then the collection N of X of all T neighborhoods of X is directed by the inclusion relation. As can be seen, if we take any neighborhood N of X, then we know that N is always contained in N. Then if L and L, M, N are neighborhoods of X, such that L is contained in M, M is contained in N, then we know that L is contained in M. For M, N, two neighborhoods of X, we can find a neighborhood M intersection N of X such that M intersection N is contained in M and M intersection N is contained in N. So, all the three conditions are satisfied. So, we can say that the collection of all neighborhoods of X that is N of X is a directed set with inclusion relation. Now we have a home assignment. Let C be the collection of all subsets of a non-empty set X. Then show that C is 
a directed set with inclusion relation and C is also a directed set with reverse inclusion relation. Now we have a definition let A greater than or equal to B a directed set and let B is contained in A. Then B is said to be a residual subset of A if and only if there exists an element A naught in A such that A belongs to B for every A greater than or equal to A naught. That means a subset B of a directed set A is a residual subset of A if we can find some element A naught in A such that elements which are following A naught are belonging to B. For example, in the directed set N with usual order greater than or equal to subset M containing all natural numbers except 1, 2 and 3 is a residual subset of N as here there exists a natural number 4 in N such that N belongs to M for all N greater than or equal to 4. And so we can say that M is a residual subset of N. But if we consider the subset L containing all even natural numbers then we find that this is not a residual subset of n because we cannot find any natural number such that uh, following that natural number all the natural numbers are belonging to l so l is not a residual subset of n now we have a definition let a greater than or equal to be a directed set and let B is contained in A. Then B is said to be a co-final subset of A if and only for every A in A there exists B in B such that B is greater than or equal to A. That is for every element in A we can find some element in B such that that element is greater than or equal to A. For example, in the directed set N with a relation greater than or equal to subset L containing all even natural numbers is a co-final subset of N. So, um, for example, uh, if we take any natural number, any even natural number, suppose N, then we know that that N uh, belongs to L and n is greater than or equal to n and if we take any natural number n which is n or uh, natural number then we can find a natural number n plus 1 and that will be an even natural number and that belongs to l such that n plus 1 is greater than or equal to n and so we can say that l is a cofinite cofinal subset of n. Now we define um, net in any set. Let A greater than or equal to be a directed set and let X be a non-empty set. Then a mapping F from A to X that is a mapping from a directed set to set X is said to be a net in X and is denoted by F that is uh, mapping then x, then a and then greater than or equal. And if we compare this definition of net with the definition of sequence, then here uh, we find that uh, in place of set of natural numbers, here we are writing set a, that is a directed set. Here we have changed, we have only changed uh, the domain of the um, function and um, since we know that uh, the set of natural numbers is a directed set with the usual order so actually we have uh, generalized the concept of sequence here and um, here we also uh, take uh, the notational convenience uh, image f of a of n element a in a under f uh, is denoted by f subscript a 
and a native next is often denoted by F subscript A for every A in A with the order which directs the you know, directed set and um, or we uh, simply it write uh, simply write as F A A belongs to A and that is also called a generalized sequence or more ethnic sequence. Uh, the term net was coined by John M. Kelly. Now we have a definition that f x a greater than or equal to b a net and y is a subset of x. Then f is said to be in y if and only if f of a is contained in y. That is if image of each element of a is contained in y then we say that um, net f is in y in place of x and, and now we have another definition uh, a net f is said to be eventually in y if and only if there exists a residual subset p of a such that f of p is contained in y that is if and only if there exists some element a not in a such that f a belongs to y for every a greater than or equal to a not. Now we have next definition f is said to be frequently in y if and only if there exists a cofinal co -final subset d of a such that f of t is contained in y. That is if and only for each a belongs to a there exists d in d d greater than or equal to a such that f of t belongs to y it follows from the above definitions that f is if f is eventually in y then f is frequently in y now we have the definition of convergence of a net in a topological space. Let x t be a topological space and let f x a greater than or equal to be a net in x. We say that net f converges to a point x naught in x relative to the topology t if and only if f is eventually in every neighborhood of x naught. That is if and only for each neighborhood n of x naught there exists a point a naught in a such that f a belongs to n for every a greater than or equal to a naught. As we know that every neighborhood of point x naught contains an open set that is also a neighborhood of x naught. So uh, in place of neighborhood we may say that f converges to a point x naught if and only if f is eventually in every open set containing x naught. Now we will consider an example. Every net in an indiscrete space x i converges to every point of x. Let f x a greater than or equal to b of net in x and let small x p an arbitrary point of space x as the only neighborhood of x is the whole space x and f a belongs to x for every a belongs to a because mapping f is from a to x and so all the images are belonging to x so f a belongs to x for every a belongs to a so the net converges to point x as x is an arbitrary point of x so net converges to every point of x. Now we will discuss a problem let x d be any discrete topological space and let f x a greater than or equal to b a net in x and then show that the net f converges to a point x naught in x if and only if f is eventually in singleton x naught. That is, if and only if there exists a naught in a such that f a is equal to x naught for every a greater than or equal to a naught. Let us solve this problem. 
let f converge to a point x0 in x as singleton x0 is an open set in x and if f converges to x0 then f converge f is eventually in every open set containing x0 so f must be eventually in singleton x0 that means there exists a0 in a such that f a belongs to singleton x0 for every a greater than or equal to a0 and if f a belongs to singleton x0 means f a is equal to x0 um, so we can say that there exists a0 in a such that f a is equal to x0 for every a greater than or equal to a0 now conversely let f be eventually in singleton x0 as every neighborhood of x0 contains singleton x0 so f is eventually in every neighborhood of x0 hence f is f converges to x0 